Cisco Catalyst 1200 and 1300 series switches are fixed managed gigabit ethernet enterprise light layer two switches. These switches are simple, flexible, and secure. They've been designed for small to medium sized businesses and branch offices. The C1200 and C1300 models operate on Linux based software. They support simple device management with network reliability and operational efficiency. Providing the ideal combination of affordability and capabilities, this switch helps you create a more efficient, better connected network. In this episode of Cisco Tech Talk, I'll go through the day zero setup on a Catalyst 1200 or 1300 switch using the web user interface. First things first, log into the switch by entering the username and password. In this video, I'll be using a C1300 switch, but the process is the same for a C1200 switch as well. Since the switch is new out of the box, enter Cisco for both the username and password to log in, all lowercase letters. Once you're logged in, it'll prompt you to set a new username and password. You can't keep Cisco for either one. For this example, I'll use admin for the username. To have an acceptable password, you need to make it complex and follow certain criteria. You could use the suggest password option by clicking on it. It'll give you a strong password. If you want to use this as your password, simply click on copy to clipboard and paste it into the password field. In this case, I'll enter my own password. If you also choose to enter your own password, you need to know a few things that are not allowed for security purposes. You can't use Cisco or any variation of the word. No common passwords are allowed. You cannot use more than three repeated characters in a row. For example, 111 will not be accepted. Additionally, using more than two sequential characters in a row, like 123, will not be allowed. Once you have a password that will be accepted, enter it in the provided field. Enter it again to confirm, and then click Apply. Now that you have a new password set, you'll be prompted to log in with these new credentials. Enter the username and password that you just configured. At this point, the switch is up and ready to use. To save the configuration, click the blinking red save icon at the top of the screen. Great, your switch has a basic setup. Next, I'll go over a few common steps that you may want to do, along with this initial configuration. In some cases, you may want to set a static IP address as opposed to using dynamic host configuration protocol, DHCP. To set a static IP, navigate to IPv4 configuration in the main menu, and then click on IPv4 interface. Select the interface and click Edit. On the Edit IP interface window, select Static IP Address under IP Address Type and click Apply. If you want to change this address to something new, click on the plus icon to add an IP interface. Here, the IP address type will be Static. Enter the IP address of your choice and the subnet mask in the provided fields. When you click apply, it's important to remember that the IP address has changed. Therefore, you need to disconnect from the current web browser session and log in using a different window. You'll see a pop-up window with a warning. It states that the DHCP address will be deleted while using a static address, as both will be on the same VLAN and on the same subnet. Click OK to confirm. Now you can log in using the new IP address with the same username and password. Save the configuration one more time. This makes sure the IP address doesn't change if you reboot the switch. After specifying a static IP address, you need to go through a few more configuration steps. First, to add the IP address of your default gateway, go to IPv4 configuration in the navigation pane and click on IPv4 static routes. Click on the plus icon and enter the destination IP prefix, network mask, and the next hop router IP address. All zeros with a zero prefix indicate the route of last resort, where all the packets will go if there is not a learned or static route. Next, you need to configure your DNS server by navigating to general IP configuration. Under DNS, click on DNS settings. Here, enter the server IP address and click apply. Be sure to save your configuration. There you go. 
you're set to manage your Catalyst 1200 or 1300 switch using the web user interface. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.